Hello, this is Janet LeBlanc with Paper and Spark, and today I'm going to walk you through how to get your sales and your fees from Stripe as easily as possible. Now, you might want this to manually enter in one of your Paper and Spark seller spreadsheets or for some other purpose. Right now, I don't have a Stripe seller spreadsheet that will import from Stripe for you, and I don't plan on making one for the time being because it's pretty easy to figure out your sales without needing to export and copy and paste the spreadsheet. All right, so the first thing you need to do is log into your Stripe account, log into your Stripe dashboard, and then we're gonna click on payments. Then you wanna click on the filter button right here. You wanna click date, and then you wanna select is between, and put the first and the last of the month for whatever month you wanna work with. It's gonna automatically pull everything between those dates. Then you can click this export button up here. It will prepare a report of all those payments and you can either wait for it to download or you can tell it to email it to you when it's ready, which is what I'm gonna do. Mine usually lands in my updates folder. You can go to your updates folder and it generally, it doesn't work for me when I click this link, but if I right click and then go to download file or download linked file as, um, it will download as a CSV onto my hard drive. You can go wherever it's saved and open it and then take a look in Excel or open it in whatever spreadsheet software you're using. So here are all my transactions from the month of April in Stripe. We've got a few different things going on. First, we've got this description column here, which is helpful if you accept Stripe in multiple platforms, like I accept Stripe on my own website and uh, via Thinkific, two different places. So the description can kind of help you figure out what is going on or where things are coming from. Um, you've got the amount column here, which is gonna be the total amount of the sale. You've got your refund column here, which will have a number in it if you've ever issued a refund. This is the fee column for if Stripe takes out any fees, a credit card commission, for example. This is your tax column. And then that's pretty much all you need to know for accounting purposes. If for any reason you want to sort or filter this data to maybe you know sort by the source or sort by state or something you can click this little triangle up here to select all the data and then click your filter button which usually looks like a funnel and now see so i've turned all these drop down menus on and now i can filter by whatever data i want to filter by one important thing to note about stripe that i've noticed is they are not going to break out your sales tax for you necessarily unless you send, I believe unless you send an invoice from Stripe directly. So like I took these orders on my website and I did charge sales tax for them. It's included in this amount right here, but Stripe is not breaking it out separately for me in the tax column. So I would need to go into WooCommerce directly to figure out the amount charged for sales tax. The same thing is going to apply to shipping received as well. All the shipping received is going to be lumped into this, this column here. It's not going to be broken out separately. In general, that's okay because all of that shipping received and sales tax collected are included as part of your gross sales. So it's okay to record it at that gross amount. But if you're doing like your state sales tax form, you're going to need to dig deeper into these numbers to figure out the pre-sales tax totals and the state sales tax amount that you actually ended up collecting. Just something to note when it comes to sales tax. So I'm gonna unclear that filter and now we're gonna talk about how to figure out your sales total for the month. It's pretty simple, you're just gonna use a couple of simple formulas to figure this out. So first before I scroll down to the bottom of my data, I'm gonna freeze that top window just to make it easier to look at and to do that you wanna select the first row underneath the header that you want to freeze and I did that by highlighting and clicking on the two you go to your window and then click freeze panes so now that I've frozen it when I scroll down that header stays up there so I can tell what I'm looking at as I scroll 
So now I'm at the bottom of my data over here on row 95. I've scrolled down, my other data's up there. That's why you can't see those first 80 rows. And I'm just gonna sum the stuff that I wanna know. So I wanna know my total sales this month accepted via Stripe. We're gonna do that with a simple sum formula. Now there's several ways that you can write a sum formula. To me, I'm just gonna navigate to that cell, start with the equal sign, and then no spaces, type the word sum. And then you have an open parentheses and you can click and drag to highlight all the cells that you want to sum up. And now you wanna finish with the close parentheses and just hit enter. And now you've got the sum of that column. Another way to do it is with the auto sum function. You can use that for simple sum formulas and you would just navigate to the blank cell right underneath all the data you wanna sum and you can go to your formulas menu and usually you'll see this auto sum right here. If you click this little drop down arrow, you'll get a few different options, but really if you just click the sum itself, it's gonna sum that up for you. It's gonna ask you, hey, is this the formula you wanna do? It's gonna auto highlight what it thinks you want to sum and it's going all the way up to row two so you wanna make sure that it's going all the way to the top of your data, which it is, and then you just hit enter, and it figured it out for you and summed it up. If you wanna change these things to dollar amounts so they're a little easier to look at, you can highlight all that data and then click the money button. We'll make it look like money. Look, makes it look a little bit nicerly formatted. Um, and then if you want to know the sum of anything else, any of these other columns, you just rinse and repeat that process. So the only other thing I really care about in my example, actually I care about two things. I care about my refunds and my fees. I can do the auto sum again, so I'll do that with my fees. Go to my empty cell, click that formula, hit enter, and I'm gonna have my fees automatically totaled for me. And another thing that you can do too is just copy and drag this formula over and it's gonna automatically apply to whatever column it's part of. So to do that, see how when I hover my cursor over this bottom right hand corner of this cell, it becomes a plus sign. I can click and drag that over and it dragged or copied that formula. Now it's applying to column E instead of column D and it's automatically summed up this whole column and told me that I've got $89 of refunds this month. So the last thing that you might be curious about doing is how to enter these numbers you just figured out over on your Paper and Spark Seller spreadsheet. And if you don't already have one of these handy templates, you can purchase one over at paperandspark.com. They can import in sales from other sources like Etsy and Shopify, um, and they're pretty handy. So what I would do is take one of your custom income rows in the revenue section and rename it something like Stripe, Stripe Sales, etc. Um, and let's see, we're dealing with the month of April, so I would just say my total sales from Stripe are $7,027.68. Just type it in real simply, and then I know that I had $89 of refunds. You always want to enter your refunds as a negative number. You might be adding it to a number that's already there, so you might need to use the equal sign to make it a simple formula, like if you already had a $100 refund there. You just want to subtract them from each other, keep it negative. And then the last thing you have to enter are your Stripe fees. So I am going to make a new selling expense row in one of those custom selling expenses to enter my $197.87 of Stripe fees. And anytime you're entering an expense over here, you enter it as a positive number because the spreadsheet already knows to subtract your fees from your sales for you. So that's how I would transfer my Stripe data into uh, one of my seller spreadsheets. And you wanna save your Stripe CSV just as a backup record of how you calculated the numbers that you entered over there. And that in a nutshell is how you can figure out your Stripe sales and fees for your books. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask in the comments of this video and you are welcome to come visit me, find more accounting resources and bookkeeping templates at paperandspark.com. Thanks.